Hi guys and welcome to ArcVis. There have been so much talk lately about AI in general and how it will affect our lives and jobs. With the coming of AI image and design generators such as Midjourney, DALI, Canva AI and many many more, AI is also arriving with prominence in our field of architecture, design and visualization. And the tools it brings will over the coming year no doubt change the way we work. In the early 80s, the first big cat program, AutoCAD, came out and many were skeptical or even afraid about the impact it would have on our industries and jobs. How it would change the output and the conventional norms for drawings and design. Now 40 years later, many few architects, designers, artists and illustrators work without the aid of CAD tools. We as creatives adopted and slowly embraced CAD tools just as we will AI. It is inevitable, whether we like it or not. One of the most interesting new AI tools as I see it right now is without doubt Midjourney. The possibilities and potential here is huge. The question is just how to benefit from it the most, how to evolve our design and make better illustrations to communicate our project better with AI tools. In this first video about Midjourney, we'll have a look on how it can benefit us in the design phase. So let's jump right in. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is to open a browser, go to midjourney.com and then you'll just click join the beta down here and you'll be transported to a Discord server. If you don't have Discord installed, you can just go to this address, discord.com slash download and just download for Windows. You will have to make an account. You'll just need an email for that. When you have made a Discord account, you just go to Midjourney again and join the beta like that and you'll be transported to your Discord server here. So I've already made an account and this is how it looks. You can see to the left there is all kinds of information. For example, here in the info tab, there is announcement from the Midjourney bot. There is changes to the Midjourney program, the rules when you use it, and how to get started. There's plenty useful information in here. It is to be said that Midjourney isn't free anymore, so you have to buy a subscription. You can do that by going to this page here, and then you can read how to get started. You can see down here, you can subscribe to a Midjourney plan. There's three different plans. I've bought the basic plan, and I find that sufficient. About 200 pictures per month, that's enough for most, I would say, but you can always consider the more expensive plan if 200 pictures per month isn't enough. So back into the Discord server and press the Midjourney bot here. You can see down here there is some newbie rooms. The newbie rooms is the place where you are supposed to be prompting the Midjourney bot. You can see there's all kinds of guys working in Midjourney right now with all kinds of cool pictures. I find these newbie rooms to be quite annoying because there is, as you can see here, people are posting all the time. So your work is getting drowned and all kinds of uh, different things. So what I prefer is to make my own server that I can work privately in. So in order to do that, you have to make a new server over here. You just go to add server there. You just go to make my own server, make my own server for me and my friends. And you just call it, I don't know, test. And then you create and then you got the test server here so now you can see up here who's uh, inside here my username is Thanos we have to add the midjourney bot to this server room and we do that by clicking the bot there and then we click on the bot and we click on add to server we go down here and we go to the test server here we just made you go to continue and just authorize I'm a human yes or at least I think so then you go to test yeah that's fine so now you can see we have the Midjourney bot and one user that is me, Thanos, on this server. Okay, so now we are ready to get to work. So the first thing we can try is to prompt the Midjourney bot with something. You start every prompt with a slash and you have all kinds of possibilities here. You can scroll down into them, but the main prompt you'll be using is imagine. So we just click imagine. You can really type anything here. Let's try something. Let's try an eye level architectural rendering of a modern house in the evening. Just press enter. The bot will start. You can see here it starts generating the image. Midjourney makes four different images of this prompt. So we have four different renders of a modern house to pick from. So now you can see it's almost done. Okay, it's finished and it only took about a minute. Down here, you can press this button and you can see the result. So remember this prompt was an eye level architectural rendering of a modern house in the evening. Just click it and open in a browser so it's bigger and we can zoom in a little bit here and bam, I mean, 60 seconds and you get this. 
I mean, we just have to discuss what just happened there because it will change something that you can prompt a machine to do these kinds of renders in such a short amount of time. So the first thing I would like to address here is the overall quality of the renders. The quality is very, very high. These renders are good. Uh, they are very, very good. The lighting is good. The overall mood is good. The insight into the house, the level of detail in these modern houses is incredible. And I mean, we've got four different iterations of a modern house, all with quite some substantial detail. So the composition also of the four pictures is quite good. I think this composition is good. And I think that's probably the best composition picture wise. The others a little bit, I would say, too zoomed in or too undirectional. And maybe the placement is a little bit off in some of them, especially this one. But the overall quality of the renders in 60 seconds in four iteration is mind blowing. This will change something. but. There's also some things it just won't change at all. And that leads me to point number two, which is the, uh, the actual design of this modern house. These kinds of pictures, first of all, they are very generic. They are not concrete. They are not taking into account specific room requirements, or room programming. They are not considering the directional sun positioning. So every architect would consider, you know, the functionality of having a pool just over the living room or what is this? I mean, it is cool and it can be built, obviously, but it looks expensive. This the design of these, they are so generic in their creations. It's so unspecified. And I mean, all architecture are specific and contextual and they have exact requirements and these pictures are just fancy pictures that we can't use for anything else than ideas as of for now so considering the lighting on the pictures i would say they are very good the light bleeds and reflects uh, correctly down here you can see kind of the sun is setting to the right side of this and is touching this part of the facade more than this part. So that's that's very, very good. I've seen other examples in Mid Journey that doesn't get this right. But I think the main point about AI in architectural rendering and lighting is that it is just as unconcrete as, you know, as we discussed in the start. It is absolutely generic. Again, this lighting situation is an ambient lighting setting, which is, I guess, easier to handle for Mid Journey and it handles it well. But again, architecture and lighting is just two things that are not generic. It's again, extremely specific and extremely contextual. And I mean, even the interior lighting in some of those houses we see here, they look very nice, but they're just absolutely generic. Where does the sources come from? For example, it, it looks great, but where does it come from? So if the only point of these pictures is to, to sell a house, maybe, but but what house because it's not the house that you have built probably because the lighting is just generic but again it's fine and you can probably use it for something but you'll have to use it in a authentic way so you cannot just sell a piece of architecture by cool drawings and then don't show what is happening with the light with the materials with the context and the concrete architectural project or sometimes we have to show the real lighting conditions because you know the contextual neighbor building is casting this big shadow all over the the garden of this house and that's important and that's authentic so let's discuss reflections for example let's take this this is obviously good there's a little tree here and it's reflected in the glass that's impressive it really is and up here it also seems to me like it's fairly good but what what is happening here the, so the the, the roof is expanding just as much here as here. So there must be the same reflection. And you can say, oh, but the reflection, a little reflection here and there. But it just goes to say that if this isn't as it should be, what about the lighting? What about the shadows? What about how this geometry of this piece of architecture actually works its surroundings? That's important. I think the reflections are 
generally good. This reflection is also good. That's also a thing with these kinds of pictures. As a architectural visualization artist, I've done visualization for the past 20 years, something like that. My clients will always nitty pick the renders. They have all kinds of ideas about what we should tweak. And that's one thing with Midjourney. You cannot tweak anything specific. If one client, you know, is very into lighting or ref reflections or this and that, yeah, I cannot change anything, man. There is no masks. I have no control over the materials. I have no control over the lightings. I have no control over the reflections. It is non-contextual, generic architecture. I have no control over time of the date. I have no control over the foliage, the, the trees and the bushes and so forth. I have no control over the interior design. Many times I'm asked to, you know, just make interiors on, on these houses and it's with plans and ideas and iterations and discussions. And that's probably where we are now with AI generated images. That is where it is very, very good for initial ideas. And that's more or less it, man, because these pictures, however fancy they are, you cannot use them for anything, man, other than have an idea brainstorm about form, maybe composition, but form and material and architectural idea, that's more or less it. And that's both good and bad, because that'll mean that I am not out of a job and a lot of architects are not out of a job. So that's perfect. We should also mention <clears throat> the view angle position from where you, you look at this architecture. I think Midjourney can do something like a fish-eyed lens. You can change lens parameters somewhat, but you cannot change the perspective or the placement from where you look at the architecture. And that is so very important. Again, architecture is contextual, so there are points of interests that not only do you want to show architecture from various positions, you also want to design the architecture with these positioned in mind. That is very, very important. Midjourney doesn't handle this at all. That's a huge discussion. Also the composition. For example, take this picture. It's a cool picture. I really, really like it. There's all kinds of functional problems. We've talked about the pool, but there is probably a lot more. <laughs> One thing I see here is it four living rooms hello i mean is it six li <laughs> seven living rooms six living rooms that's too much but but the composition of this it's quite good i would like some more space down here because there is an important story here and what what does this staircase lead to and why isn't there a door here and so could we expand the picture to this side and mid journey does have some functionality to expand pictures. So maybe we could modify the composition a little bit here, but it's, as I've seen it, a little bit clunky right now and you don't have perfect control. So the uh, possibilities of changing picture composition is, is not good enough. Also, I, uh, I want a 3D model of these and we are not there yet. Midjourney can't do anything about that. And as far as I'm concerned, no program can do that yet, maybe it will happen. And that's a very important step because if you can generate pictures until you're happy with a project, more or less, and then have uh, the program, the AI generate a somewhat suitable model, then we're talking because then we are fast forwarding to the contextual exact discussion of actual architecture that is uh, usable in the real world. And also from the perspective of a uh, visualization artist, every client have all kinds of ideas of materials, move this and that, make another interior here, or even I have oftentimes some idea, couldn't we do this or that? And it's a discussion back and forth. And with this, it's way too complicated to make all the functional architectural concept development in pictures. You have to have a reference that's drawings and a 3D model. So until, you know, some AI program can make 3D models of this, so that we can tweak it to not have eight living rooms and a pool right there. Just, you know, could we take it over here and save $200,000? Okay, and make a door here. Then we are starting to make this 
very useful. And it's not only to tweak the geometry here and there, although that is a very, very big part of it. It is also to be able to make animations or make the exact view and return to other views of the exact same project. If you like this project and you want to investigate how does this house look when you arrive to this position and the garden opens and there the crown jewel of this site is there, the perfect house and it's not possible and it's very very important each and every assignment i do that is very important to tell a story about this concrete piece of architecture from different specific points of interests that any buyer or any client have specific interests in and it's absolutely hopelessly incapable of that it's another talk if you can make a model it's another talk if you can for example in 3d studio max or any other 3d application have a prompt that can generate 3d ideas or iterations or even have a program developed like mid journey to have some crude 3d models from this that we can work with and the possibilities are endless there and I guess it eventually will come. And it is my belief that when that comes, AI needs some humans to control that, to use that in a real world setting where communication, economy, all kinds of specific tweaking of the house is, is in a reality. Again, mid journey prompt like we just that mid journey with here is perfect for idea generation and that is exactly how we will use it just like uh, chat gpt is i wouldn't say perfect but fun to use to make an initial assignment that has some you know qualities uh, attached towards it that that maybe can help us you know th there was an example with outdoor green spaces uh, suitable for learning i mean that's a good idea so we as architects have to use this tool and use it very specifically and use it with care and know what it is able to and what it is not able to and it has always been like this from autocad and from you know 500 years ago there's always been new tools and you need people to handle them that's it last thing i have to mention about these pictures is the resolution now they are 1024 by 1024 so that's not a high resolution you can upscale it in photoshop or any third party program but it's not good enough you cannot use part of these pictures in other pictures for example which has some application but as of for now the resolution is too low also there are issues about copyrights it is yet to be seen how you know lawmakers will address this in future a last thing to mention is how i've used the mid journey program for the last i don't know couple of months half a year in assignments you can see here this is my server here i've used it in all kinds of ways some some of the application i have found it quite useful I wouldn't say quite useful, but usable. It, it can make parts of your architectural projects a little bit easier to make. For example, I had some background houses. I need to make some interior designs too. It's a big task if you don't have that much time. So for example, this, I pushed the prompt to make fast interior visuals for background buildings. And I would say it's may, maybe a use AI in two to five percent of the time spent with my projects now it's not that i don't use ai i have yet to find very good use points of ai so 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 even this i, I remember this it was so annoying not to be able to get interior designs without reflections and beams going down and lightings that i didn't like and reflections i didn't like and the angle i couldn't control the angle so i remember it now i want frontal perspectives of interiors without glass and it i used hours and hours to make a prompt that did something i could use for anything and this was more or less the best i've got and it was still you know quite useless i could almost have done it you know the hard way just making the furniture myself modeling it all setting the lighting the textures rendering integrating in short amount of time that i used this but i wouldn't say it's not useful you can use it for things i use it for remember some plants 
uh, comments for a project here. I made a, a tech university in uh, the outskirts of Copenhagen for a client. And we, we have to have some tech panels. It was perfect for that. I mean, but it, it was 1% of the picture. So yeah, it's fine. You can use it. I used some pictures for, I had to use a shelf with some books on in ambient lighting. That's another thing to control the perspective. So this is a frontal perspective and this and this, but this, this isn't. And you're not able to control anything about the perspective. I used hours and hours to get a right perspective on things and it wasn't possible. But I managed to use some of those pictures for, for something. But it's, I mean, it's not there yet, man. Okay, that was exciting. Mid Journey is an interesting new toy for sure. And it's fine as an initial idea generation tool for us architects and designers, although completely unspecific and uncontextual and incapable of useful tweaks. AI has a long way and some serious hurdles to come by before it becomes useful beyond idea generation. The first step is to be able to generate a usable 3D model in a common file format. And we've talked about 10 other issues using it in a real world project. In the next video, we'll push Midjourney to help us generate ideas about form and materials for our specific university campus project in the heart of Copenhagen. You'll find useful links to resources about Midjourney in the description below. If you have anything to add, feel free to leave a comment below. For now, thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.